okay, I think I have this thing working. I think I have it working. So I think I have it working. So I want to say good afternoon. It is Latanya D. Williams, and I wanted to take some time right now to just encourage you in the Lord. I wanted to take some time this afternoon just to come before you, to um, to fellowship with you, and to just bring to you um, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to share with you some words of encouragement. I love the word of God because everything we need is in the word and there's life in the word there's strength in the word there's joy in the word of God there is hope in the word there is peace in the word of God everything we need is in the word and I thank God for that because it is our comfort and our affliction it is our um, peace in the midst of chaos it is the revelation that we receive um, from God about who he is and so I just want to come to you today just to share with you some words of encouragement. So I'm using my iPad today to um, deliver this brief message to you. And I think I have it working um, properly. I see some people, uh, people responding. Hi, Tracy. God bless you. Thank you. I see that people are chiming in. So that's good news for me because I know that my iPad is working properly. And so I want to come to you today to talk to you about keeping your mind on God, being Christ focused and the benefit and the power and the peace that comes with keeping our mind fixed and focused on God. And not just in this time in the situation that we're currently facing, but at all times, the word of God says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee." Because he trusted in me. I've learned from personal experience that when my mind is not on God, that I don't have the level of peace, God's perfect peace, that I desire to have when my mind is not on him. So the more I keep my mind on God, the more peace of mind that I have. And all of you know that a peace of mind is priceless. Amen. So God bless you. I see my BFF, Elwanda, is on with us. God bless you, BFF. And I just want to encourage you, hallelujah, um, today through the word of God. And I believe that when I'm done with this brief message, that you are going to be even more intentional and determined to keep your mind on God. When you start to realize that you're, you're losing grip of your peace, that your peace of mind is slipping away from you, from you, then you need to check yourself and see what is my focus? Why is it that I have no peace? And you will find every time it's because you have taken your mind, if you have taken your eyes off God. The more you keep your mind on God, the more peace you will have in your mind and in your life. And so I'm going to talk to you today about this, this, this beautiful, beautiful passage and this scriptural passage that God gave me to share with you today. That is going to encourage you to keep your mind and to keep your eyes on God. I am well aware, as you all are, of all the things that are going on in the world and this corona um, pandemic and this corona crisis that we're facing. And all I keep hearing, as are all of you, is corona, corona, corona. But I want to talk about Christ, 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 and more Christ. I want to keep Jesus at the center of my focus, Jesus at the center of my life, and Jesus at the center of of everything that's happening in the world today because Jesus is the answer to it all. He is the answer to it all. And so we must not take our eyes off God at any time. We must not take our minds off God at any time. Everything we need is in him. He is who and what we need. So I want to encourage you today, and I'm going to do that through the word of God, because nothing can encourage you, equip you, and empower you like the word of God. And I'm confident 
that once we're done, we're done here today with this brief message, that all of you are going to leave here even more encouraged. And you're going to leave here more determined to keep your mind and your eyes on God. Because don't you know that God is greater than any virus, corona, influenza, any type of virus, any type of issue, any type of situation. Our God is greater. And so I'm just going to pray briefly, and we are going to jump right into the message that God has given me to share with you today. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we are so grateful to you. We know that you, O oh God, are the ruler and the creator of all things. We know that you are Lord of all. And Father, we know, O oh God, that you are with us and that you are for us, Heavenly Father. We thank you right now for your presence, Holy Spirit. And God, I just pray that as I bring forth your word today, that you will speak through my lips of clay, your oracles, so that you may be glorified in all things, O oh God. And that your word may come forth in power, O oh God. Father, I pray that the hearts and minds of the people will be conditioned and prepared, O oh God, through this prayer to receive your word that shall come forth on today. Father, I pray that our hearts and minds will be clear, that nothing will stand in the way of us receiving today your engrafted word, which is able to save, to sanctify, and to sustain our souls. Father, I cast down every thought, every imagination, every distraction, and everything in our way, in our lives, in our minds, in this world, oh God, that will stand against your truth, and your knowledge, and your wisdom, and your word, and your will concerning our lives. I cast all of it down right now, oh God. God, we thank you right now for your word. And Father, we thank you for being mindful of us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for being faithful when we're faithless, oh God. Father, we thank you for being our peace and our joy and our hope, even in the midst of chaos, oh God. You said your peace you leave with us, not as the world give, you give unto us. You told us in your word to let not our hearts be troubled and neither to let it be afraid. And so, Father, we thank you that we have no reason to fear. We have no reason to worry, oh God, for in this world we will have tribulations, but you said that we can be of good cheer. For you, my God, have overcome the world. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Greater is he that is for us and with us than he and anything else that's in this world. So, Father, we thank you that through Christ Jesus, we have the victory in all things, under every circumstance and in any situation, that we are victorious and that we are more than conquerors through you, O oh God, through your love, through your grace, through your power, and through your mercy. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that even the coronavirus, O oh God, is not a contender for you, for you are in the, you are in control of your universe and your creation, God. You are sovereign, Lord Jesus, and everything must fall subject to your word, oh God. So we thank you right now, oh God, that you are still God. We thank you that you are the God of all flesh, Lord God, and that there's nothing too hard, too difficult, too big, too small, oh God, for you, Lord Jesus. We thank you right now, oh God, that you are our God. And we thank you that we are covered by your blood. Hallelujah. And we thank you that no plague, no diseases, no sickness shall come nigh upon us. Father, we thank you right now, oh God, for covering us with your blood. We thank you for being our sword and our shield. We thank you for being, oh God, our, our refuge and our strength, oh God, our strong tower. We thank you that the righteous can run to you and we can hide and that you will keep us safe, oh God, under the wings of your pavilion. We thank you that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So, Father, we thank you right now, O oh God, that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. No weapons of plague, no weapons of disease, no weapons that the enemy send our way, O oh God, shall be able to prosper. Even if they form, they won't prosper against us, O oh God. So, Father, we thank you that you are always with us, O oh God, and that you are a very present help in the time of need and in a time of trouble. So, Father, we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Now I'm going to decrease, O oh God, as always, decrease, so that you may increase. Let it be none of me, but all of you, O oh God, as I bring forth your word of encouragement and truth to your people. In your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 
Amen, amen, amen. So let us get started, hallelujah, with this word. I hate the fact that my iPad is kind of flipped because it's hard for me to see your comments. But I will be looking here at the screen. It's on the side, so it's kind of challenging for me to see. But know that I will be looking and, and trying to, um, you know, respond to your comments. I'm going to turn my phone off here because I had a little worship music playing, okay? Let us get started with the book of Matthew, chapter 14. Matthew, chapter 14, verse 22 through 33. And as I read the scripture, I'm going to minister to you from each one of these scriptures. Many of you have heard this story before. I've actually taught on this before, but God brought it back to my remembrance again. He brought it back to my spirit again, and he gave me deeper revelation, and he gave me some words of wisdom and exhortation and encouragement that can meet us right where we are in this day and time, in this season, and in the current situation that we are facing. Amen. Know that we're not facing this alone. Know that God has already gone before us to make the cricket places straight. Amen. So let us read. It is Matthew chapter 14. And I'm reading from my new King, King James Version. And um, chapter two, verse 22 says, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Now I want you to pay very close attention to this verse. It says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. Now, we know that God is omniscient. He's also omnipotent. He's omnipresent. But when, he's, when I say he's omniscient, that means that God knows everything. Nothing is a surprise to God. Nothing is a mystery to God. God knows all things. And he knew that while those disciples were in the boat going to the other side, that they were going to go through a storm. He knew this. But he made them get into the boat and go to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. See, Jesus always prayed. And he says that men are to always to pray and not faint. And if we're not consistent in our prayer lives, we are going to faint. And what that means is that we're going to give up, we're going to give out, and we're going to give in. And God does not want us to do that. And that's why he says that men are to always to pray and not faint. And what he means by that is that we are to have a consistent prayer life. I see a lot of people now saying, we need to pray, we need to pray, we need to pray. And the truth of the matter is, we should always be praying. We should be proactive in prayer and not reactive. In other words, we shouldn't make for a, wait for a crisis to happen before we pray. We shouldn't wait for somebody to get sick before we pray. We shouldn't wait for a disaster to come before we pray. We ought to be proactive in our prayers. Men are to always to pray and not faint. We shouldn't call national prayer when there's, a, when there's a crisis and a pandemic. We shouldn't call for a national prayer when there's earthquakes in diverse places. We should always be praying. Men are to always to pray and not faint. And we shouldn't be reactive in prayer. In other words, time something happened, we should start praying. Maybe if we pray a lot more before things happen, less things will happen. But we are to be proactive in prayer, not reactive in prayer. We are to have consistent prayers and praises and not contingent prayers and praises. In other words, we shouldn't just be praying to God based on our circumstances. We are to always to pray to God whether you feel like it or not. Our faith is not based off our feelings. It's not based, based off our feelings. We are to pray even when your flesh doesn't feel like praying. Even when your flesh doesn't want to pray. Prayer is so powerful. It prepares you. It positions you for anything and everything that's to come. Hallelujah. So make it a habit to establish a consistent prayer life. Let prayer become who you are. And you know the good thing about prayer? The more you practice it, the more you're going to progress in it. 
The more you practice prayer, the more you are going to progress in your prayer life. Continue to practice prayer every day. Practice, practice, practice. Because the more you practice prayer, the more progress you're going to make in prayer. And the more prayer is going to become a part of who you are and what you do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But it says, Jesus went up onto the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone there. That means he made quality, he spent quality time in prayer, not just driving around in the car. And I'm not knocking us for praying in our cars, but I don't know about you, but when I'm on 85, I can't pray fervently like I desire to drive around 85, you know, the highway. I like to have that quality time with God to pray. And so make sure that you set aside some time, quality time to pray to God. So that you will always be in position. That you will always be prepared for what's to come. Amen. So, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea. Now, while Jesus is praying, the boat that he told the disciples, they said he made them get on this boat. That very boat that Jesus made them get on was now in the middle of the sea. Look at that. Tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And right now, we are in the middle of the boat in this corona crisis. And, some, and, and the winds are tossing. The waves are, are pounding against the boat because what's going on is contrary. It's creating confusion and it's creating conflict. And it's creating fear in, in the people everywhere. It says in the middle of the sea, it was tossed by the waves for the wind was contrary. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them. This is somewhere around 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Imagine being in the middle of a sea. A hurricane Katrina is coming your way. You're in the middle of this sea on a boat, not a cruise ship, <laughs> but a boat. And the waters and the waves are pounding against the boat. Some of us feel like that right now. God, we are in the midst of this corona crisis. Some of us feel like we're in the middle of the sea of nowhere and that the winds and the ramifications and the circumstances surrounding this, this coronavirus, it is pounding against our boat. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that Jesus made intercessions for us. He was praying, and I bet that he was interceding for these disciples. And even right now, Jesus is interceding for us. He's always praying and interceding before the Father on our behalf. So know that even in this, that Jesus knows what's going on. And also know that Jesus is interceding for us, and he is praying for us, his children, his people, his disciples. Hallelujah. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. Hallelujah. Look at Jesus. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. Because they saw this figure, and they thought that it was a ghost. Truly. It was a ghost, but not the ghost that they had supposed. It was the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God. Because, see, the disciples were about to have an encounter <laughs> Woo! with the ruler and creator of all things. Jesus was about to miraculously reveal himself to the disciple, the disciples in a way that he had never done before. He was about to miraculously reveal himself. And guess what? In this coronavirus crisis, guess what? Jesus is about to miraculously and powerfully and mightily reveal himself in a mighty way to the people of God and every person in this world. We're about to witness a miraculous move of God. Hallelujah. All things are working together for the good of those who love the Lord. God will not be defeated. Not be defeated. He never has been and he never will be. Corona is no match for our God. Hallelujah. And it says that they said it is it is a ghost. 
And they cried out for fear like many of us are doing right now. We're crying out because we're afraid. We're crying out because we're fearful. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, and Jesus is saying to you today, this is part of the reason I'm sitting here before you right now in my kitchen. God sent me to tell you these words as well. Be of good cheer. It is I do not be afraid. My God, he told the disciples who were sitting in the middle of the sea, in the middle of a storm on a boat with the wind and the waves crashing and pounding against the boat. Jesus began to walk on water, hallelujah, to go and rescue and his disciples and to reveal himself to the disciple in a miraculous way, miraculous way, in a mighty way, in a powerful way, a way that they had never witnessed before. And he's going to do the same thing for us in the middle of this coronavirus pandemic. It says, immediately, Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And God is saying that to us today. Do not be afraid. Because I'm here and I'm God. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, Command me to come to you on the water. And so he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And this is the part that's very important. Remember I told you my message is keeping your eyes and your mind on Jesus. So I'm going to back up a little bit and read that again. So Jesus said to Peter, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, because at that point his fear had turned to faith. Now, Peter was no longer fearful. He was having faith in God. And so he got off the boat. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when Peter saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. When Peter saw, that means in order for Peter to have seen that the wind had become more boisterous, Peter had to take his eyes off God. Because as long as Peter kept his eyes and his mind on God, not only did he have peace in the middle of the storm, hallelujah, come on now. Not only did Peter have peace in the middle of the storm, he was able to walk above it, rise above it. And walk straight to Jesus. But it says. But when he saw. That means he took his eyes off God. When he saw. That the wind was boisterous. He was afraid. And many of us are afraid. Right now. In the midst of this crisis. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't have any concerns. But I am saying that we should not be consumed. Be concerned. But not consumed. And concerned. For good reasons. There are guidelines and there are precautionary measures that we are supposed to take. So we ought to be concerned to a, a great level of degree, but we are not to be consumed. Hallelujah. We are not to be consumed. When he saw that that wind was boisterous, that means he took his eyes off God. He was afraid. And many of us are afraid. Have you noticed that when you keep your mind on God, you wake up in the morning, so I'm going to keep my mind on God. I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to take God at his word. I'm going to stand on the promises of God. You have so much peace. But then it's time you start flicking on the Fox 5 News and Channel 2 and CNN and people texting you things and sending stuff in your inbox and posting stuff on your page. Now the enemy is going to use these things as a distraction to take your mind off God. And now when you are not worrying, and now when you are not afraid, all of a sudden you have become. And if that's your situation right now, I'm here to encourage you to get your eyes and your mind back on God where they belong. Hallelujah. God is in control of his universe and his creation. God is in control of our circumstances. He is in control of the outcome. And he said that all things are 
working together for our good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Peter cried and said, Lord, save me. Hallelujah. Lord, save me. And if you feel yourself sinking in despair, sinking in fear, sinking in doubt, cry out to God and say, Lord, save me. Lord, help me. Lord, deliver me. Cry out to our God. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand. Look at that. He didn't wait five minutes later. He didn't wait five days later. The Bible says that immediately that Jesus stretched out his hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, glory. <laughs> and he called him because one thing about God, he will not let us fall. He will not let us drown. He says, when you go through the fire, I'm with you. When you go through the flood, I'm with you. He says, you shall not drown and you shall not be consumed because I am with you. Don't you know he will not allow us to be consumed by Corona. He will not allow us to drown in fear and doubt and in unbelief. God is here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and called him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, <laughs> why did you doubt? Why are you doubting? Why are you afraid? Why are you fearful? Don't you know that I'm a very present help in the time of need and in the time of trouble? God says, I am here. Be not afraid. It is I. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. The wind ceased. God is sovereign. God is in control of his creation. God is in control of nature. Don't you know that when God says peace, be still, it is so. One word from God changes everything. God could have easily calmed the sea to stop the water from the shore. But he didn't want to do it that way. He wanted the disciples to understand that I am God. He wanted them to understand that I am the deity. I am God. He wanted them to see his glory. He wanted them to see his power. He wanted them to see his deity. He wanted them to know that I am God. Woo! <laughs> Corona is no match for God. No storm. No situation, no con condition, no disease, no plague, no pandemic is a match for our God. And he is going to show himself strong and mighty on our behalf. Hallelujah. He's done it time of old, times of old. He's done it in the past. He's going to do it again because he is that same God. And God is not a one, he doesn't do a one wonder, a one work wonder. He is a God of miracles. He is a God of power. He is the one and only true living God and all power belongs to him. He is sovereign. Everything falls subject to the word and the will of God. He is in control. Stop looking to man and start looking to the son of man. Stop looking at government and start looking at God. He is in control. Stop looking at Corona and start looking to Christ. Look to the sick, the hill from which comes our help. Our help comes from God. Hallelujah. I have to encourage you today. I have to encourage myself today because as I am encouraging you, I'm encouraging me. God is in control of his creation. God is in control of his universe. God is in control of nature, the whole entire world. God is in control. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, and they who dwell in it, the cattle upon a thousand hills, it all belongs to God. Power belongs to God. He is the power of all powers. He is the great I am. Hallelujah. God is in 
absolute control. Know this. Get it into your spirit. Get it into your head. Get it into your heart. Scream it. Shout it to the mountaintop. God is in control. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Even in this moment, he wanted to demonstrate to the disciples that I'm in control of all things. I'm in control of the waves of the sea. <laughs> I'm in control of the waves of this ocean. I'm in control. I am in control because I am God. And it says, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. This is what I love. Check this out. Then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him, saying, truly, truly, you are the son of God. <laughs> truly, surely, woo, most certainly, you are are the son of God. And that is what the world is going to say when they see what our God does. Amen, Pastor. The government is already on his shoulder. But that's what we're going to see. The world is going to be saying truly, he is God. Let me tell you what's going to happen with this thing. Those who don't know him are going to come to know him. And those who do know him are going to come to know him in deeper and greater ways. This thing is going to work out for the good. This thing is going to work out for the good because many are going to come to believe. Many are going to see the glory of God. He says, if you believe, you shall see my glory. If you believe, you shall see the glory of God. And we are going to see the glory of God in this situation. God will be glorified. God will be magnified in the earth because of the miraculous works and mighty acts that he's going to perform even in the midst of this corona situation. And many are going to say truly, he is the son of God. Truly, God is real. Truly, God is with us. Truly, God is for us. Truly, he is God. Hallelujah. Many are going to come to believe. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Keep your mind and your eyes on Jesus. You're going to have to be very intentional about this thing because the enemy is going to use everything he can because see, he's, a, he's having a field day with many people. He's having a field day. And he's going to use this thing to serve as a distraction for you and for me, for all of us. But I'm not going to allow him to distract me. Don't allow him to distract you. Keep your eyes. Keep your mind on the Lord. He says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. The more you keep your mind on God, the more you're going to have peace and the more you're going to trust in God and believe in God, even in the midst of this chaotic situation, you will have peace and you will have joy and you will worship God and you will praise God for his faithfulness and his goodness and his grace and his mercy. Keep your mind, keep your eyes on the Lord. That's what God sent me here today to tell you and to encourage you to do. Keep your eyes and your mind on the Lord. God is faithful and God is in control of his creation. God is in control of nature. God is in control of everything on this earth and in it. He is sovereign. He is the ruler and creator of all things. Take this opportunity and this time to really trust in God and rely upon him and to, to lean upon the Lord. Trust him. Seek his face. Build and work on your relationship with God. Let this, let this increase your faith. Allow this to work out and for the good for you. That is my goal. To say, Lord, you know what? This is a chance for me to get to know you in ways that I didn't know you before. For me to get to know you in better ways, greater ways, deeper ways, oh God. Because God is revealing himself in a mighty way. And if we position ourselves, if we believe, we will see the glory of God even in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. So let us just continue to be united in the faith. 
Let us continue to be encouraging to one another. Let us continue to pray one for another. Let us continue to stand in faith and prayer and agreement. Amen. Let us be on one accord of one mind, of one faith. Let us just continue to, to speak the word of God, to speak the word of God in this situation, in every situation. This is not the time to be pointing fingers at anybody. This is not the time to be negative. This is not the time to be bickering. This is not the time to be getting into foolishness and carrying on all sorts of ways. This is time for us to stand as the people of God. To stand as the people of God. And before I close, I would like to say that um, when this thing come to pass, it's come, it's come to pass. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Check your motives. Because many are calling on the, upon the name of the Lord right now. Many are. But what's your motivation? Are you calling upon God? See, everybody said, let us pray. And let, us, let us pray to the Lord. But are we seeking God because we want him? Or are we seeking God because we want this situation to come to pass and, and to come to pass quickly? Because when it's over... Are, you gonna still, are we going to still have, have, have that same fervor? Are we going to still be praying to God with fervor? Are we going to continuously be seeking his face with fervor? Or are we going to be like the ten lepers? When God healed them, only one came back to praise God. Don't forget about God when this is over. Don't forget about God when this is over. God wants you to have the same zeal and the same fervor for him and seeking his face as many are doing right now. Don't let this be a formality for you. Don't let this be a formality for your former godliness. Don't let it be a formality. Be sincere. Because above all things, we shouldn't just be saying, God, let this corona come to, to pass. But Lord, save my soul. This should be an opportunity for, for some of us, many to receive the gift of salvation. Make sure... That you keep your, your soul <laughs> at the forefront. Because if you don't leave, leave here because of Corona. And you leave here because of some other type of tragedy. Or natural cause or whatever. If your soul is not safe. Then you're going to be lost in all eternity. So at the end of the day. Make sure that your, your zeal for seeking, to God, seeking God. And your motive for seeking God is real right now. It's sincere. Don't just use God to, to wipe the Corona out. So you and your family and your friends will be safe. But saying, Lord, I've realized something that I need you. Because we have always had a need for God. And if it takes Corona virus to remind people of our great need for God, then to God be the glory. But don't ever forget, even when Corona passed, that you need God. You always, I always, we always will need God more and more each and every day. And not just in a crisis. Outside of crisis. We need God in everyday life. I do. I'm speaking personally for myself. So I feel compelled to say this. When all this is over, don't forget about God. When all this is over, don't lose your zeal. Don't lose your fervor. Because if you do, your motives for seeking God were wrong. They were wrong motive, motives. And motive matters to God. He says, seek. you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. <laughs> that means with all sincerity. Make sure that you have a genuine, personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you don't, I encourage you to let this be an opportunity for you to cry out, just like Peter did, and say, Lord, save me. Lord, save my soul. Don't just save me from Corona, but save my soul. Hallelujah. Yes, now listen, he looks at the heart. So remember, God looks at the heart. He knows our motives. He knows our intention. Don't seek God because you're afraid and want Corona to pass. But you seek God because you want a genuine relationship with him. And you want to know who God is. Thank you, Pastor Ruby. She says, people of God, stay and stand strong at the altar. Amen. This will pass, but the word of God stands and will not pass away. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ruby. Thank you, Nalissa. Thank all of you for joining me. I pray sincerely. And I believe, I know that you are blessed by this word. It's not my word. It's God's word. I'm just a deliverer. I'm just a servant. The one he chose to speak to you today. I'm his mouthpiece. 
in this moment. And so I thank God for, for choosing and using me to share this word with you. Keep your mind and keep your eyes on the Lord. For in him, you will have perfect peace, even in the midst of chaotic situations such as this. So be blessed by the Lord. And we are going to um, conclude quickly in prayer. And I'm going to release you and um, stay encouraged. Keep your mind. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Father, we thank you, oh God. Ooh, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. For your word is truth. Father, we thank you that you are the glory and the lifter of our heads and our countenance. Father, we thank you that you or yourself are an encourager. And we thank you right now for encouraging us in your word, for encouraging us, oh God, through your Holy Spirit. And Father, we thank you for speaking a powerful word to us today. Father, we believe your word and we receive it with meekness and gladness and joy, oh God. Father, let that word take root in our hearts that we will stay encouraged. Father, help us to be intentional, oh God, to keep our mind and our eyes on you. Father, help us to trust in you and believe in you and to rest and rely upon you no matter what circumstances are surrounding us, oh God. Father, you are the one true, one and only true living God. And besides you, Heavenly Father, there is no other. Father, we thank you for what you're doing right now in our midst. We thank you for what you're doing in this world, oh God, even the things that have not manifested themselves yet, even the things that we cannot see. Father, we know that you are working. You have been working. You are always working and you will continue to work for your people and on behalf of your people. So Father, we thank you for the miraculous manifestation of your glory, oh God, and your power and your deity that's going to spread across the globe of this world, oh God, every continent and every country. We thank you right now that all will be saying that truly he is the son of God, truly. It was God, truly. It was only God. Father, we thank you for the testimony that's going to come forward, oh God, as a result, oh God, of this situation. Father, we thank you that you will be glorified and magnified in the earth. Father, I pray right now for every country, every continent, every nation, people everywhere, oh God, regardless of their race, their ethnicity, and their creed. Father, I pray right now for these people, oh God, those who have lost loved ones, I pray that you comfort them and give them strength, oh God, that you give them peace and hope, Lord Jesus, that you restore back to them the joy of their salvation, Lord God. Father, I pray, oh God, for people everywhere, those who are have been impacted by the coronavirus, I speak healing their way, Lord Jesus. You are the Lord, thy God, that heals, oh God. I speak for a speedy, oh God, recovery, that you will raise them up from their bed of affliction and sickness, oh God. Father, that they will just walk, oh God, in healing, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that we will not be paranoid and in panic, oh God, but they will pray we will praise you, O oh God, at all times that our praise will continually be in our mouth, that our souls will make a boast in the Lord, for you are faithful, and you are merciful, and you are good. And Father, we thank you right now for all of who you are, and all of what you're doing for us, you have done, and you will do. Father, to you be the glory, the dominion, and the power, and the glory, and the praise, O oh God, forever and ever. Father God, amen. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you, God. For all of who you are, what you've done for us, you are a good God. You are a good Father. And we thank you right now that you are sovereign and that you, God, you, Lord, you are in control. In your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. And God bless you.